support for the establishment of an independent Kurdish state. Again, whispering to a minimum, please. No, no whispering. No whispering. Okay. No yes. whispering. Just silence. There are too many people who allow whispering. The tragedy of the common. Right. Uh, I got it. Okay, USMG has significantly increased its support for establishment of an independent Kurdish state. for establishment of uh, independent Kurdish state. First off, uh, first off, the observations. First, our definitions are all going to be contextual. When we confer, uh, except for the fact that when we look to like independence, we're going to be looking towards like recognition as an own governing body, as an own uh, like entity. So, second observation is that this policy around the word shouldn't that resolution implies a call to action. Therefore, we're going to be debating a policy, uh, a policy, uh, and uh, use judges are going to be evaluating based on net benefits. Whichever team can bring the most societal benefits for the most amount of people is going to be winning this round. Net benefits is really good because we have to look at the consequences of our actions to look at whether things are bad or good in the first place, or to establish whether they're not better good in the first. Place. Third observation is a bit of background. First of all, Kurds are an independent, uh, independent group of two, 25 to 35 million people in a mountainous region that is currently in Turkey. Fourth, they are the fourth largest ethnic group within this country. And third of all, Israel actually supports the individual state. And they have investors from four different sectors that are willing to invest, but they're not an independent state, which is, uh, like detracts the investors from actually going in there. But fourth of all, US, the United States actually denied the votes for independence on September 13th because they, it was uh, quote unquote not the time, and they were not willing to endorse because uh, they were not willing to endorse at that time due to like uh, due to the fact that ISIS was actually decreasing its uh, de decreasing. It, like, like they were decreasing control over there, so there was no need to actually endorse them. But now, as a, a, a but they it, the Kurdish actually ignored this and actually did their vote a, as well on September 25th. So that brings us to the plan. USFG will declare international endorsement of the Kurds' vote for independence. USFG will declare international endorsement of the Kurds' vote for independence as all through normal means and as soon as possible. The solvency, first of all, is that this is the international perception is going to be solved. You can see here that the little A's that when United States support the Kurds in the civil war with uh, President Clinton, the U, and it eventually after a couple of months or years also endorsed them as well. So you can see that this is uniquely tied to getting international back for this kind of state. The first advantage is about lies. Oh, questions on any of the plan sets? Awesome. Okay, first advantage is about lies. First of all, uniqueness, Turkey, uh, ever, uh, Turkey and like Iraq, all these countries in the middle have actually been really, really bad towards these Kurds. Ever since the 1980s, you can see that Saddam Hussein in Iraq actually attacked the Kurds with poisonous gas. And so you can see that Turkey doesn't care about the interests of these people. You can also see that the UN actually accused Turkey of killing hundreds and hundreds of the Kurds, but there were no actions to put forth from the UN to stop because they didn't want to like uh, muddle. Uh, they didn't want to muddle the uh, the process of like defeating ISIS over there. But second of all, you can see that there's no resources. The Iraqis is actually blocking any humanitarian aid from reaching these Kurdish forces. Any resources in the United States. Uh, 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 sorry, and any resources from getting there because they're not independent. Also, third of all, you can see that the UN is not helping because it's not on their agenda because the, uh, like, there's no big country that is like willing to support because the United States just backed down on uh, September 13th. You can see in the links, first of all, they're going to be establishing their independent, uh, we're going to be like uh, establishing that their independence is legitimate. And this sets a precedent for, uh, or sets up a precedent for uh, how we're going to be, in, uh, how are we going to be endorsing these Kurds in the future? But second of all, this enables the US support to rally the UN back. And you can see there in 2005 when the UN did not, uh, did not actually recognize like the, the Kurds forces as uh, actually uh, as the, the Kurds as an independent um, as an independent nation until there were advances of the United States uh, in a couple years later that changed their perceptions. You can see this <coughs> in that in that U.S. Uh, support actually it leads or spills over to U.N. support. You can see that third of all, this key to human solving back with human rights. There are millions of people dying at the hands of their uh, their own Turkish government that don't uh, that do not endorse them as a as an ethnic group. So you can see that we're going to be reaching all these millions of lives that are dying right now in the status quo. Internally, that first of all, you see that aid is, in, is the key to is the key to defeating ISIS as well. You see that Kurds. Have a uh, have, have the possibility of territorial gains, and they just need like these humanitarian aid resources, enabled to uh, that are enable them to actually live to the next day to keep on fighting. So this humanitarian aid is really really key. And uh, so, uh, second of all, you can see that the UN support is key to independence. If they have their own government stabilized, it enables them to ask for more uh, to ask for more aid from other countries to actually in, uh, to attract all these investors from attract all these investors that I stated earlier in my inherency that would be able to come towards this country. Third of all, you can see that Tillerson uh, uh, of um, of Turkey is actually has economic ties in with Trump even though that they disagree about things like uh, uh, uh like for example, they called like Trump called him a uh, no. Tillerson called Trump a moron, but like you can see here that their economic ties are what's going to hold them together. For example, their trade relations are at 18.7 billion dollars with Turkey. So at the point where like we're going to be endorsing them, Tillerson will have to comply with what is happening. There's not going to be much of uh, like a chance of a backlash. So you can see the fourth one we can uh, solve for things like dysentery problems that are also occurring within Cur within the Kurdish states. So you can see that uh, in addition to all these millions of people dying, or there's also uh, like but there's an increased rate of poverty, which brings us to the impact. First of all, we're going to be increasing quality of life. Poverty actually affects 15 percent 
percent of the Kurdish region. That is a large percentage of these millions and millions of people that we're going to be solving back for when they're able to stabilize themselves. I'll take all questions at the end on uh, the the poverty impact. Oh yeah, poverty is uh, poverty is a systemic impact. You see that one year poverty takes up to seven years of your life, and eighty percent of people that are in poverty never actually uh, never actually recover. So you see this is a systemic problem. You're going to be uh, looking towards this. Second advantage is about Kurdish legitimacy. Houses, uh, Kurdish legitimacy. First and unique is first of all, uh, ISIS is actually escalating tensions within the last month. You can see that ISIS after October seventeenth, uh, after the after their collapse at the Ra at the Raqqa, actually were reallocating their resources to reposition their next attack. So that's a little bit of this is that ISIS has been making new advances. They've reported they've been reporting fake ISIS advances as of September thirteenth, which means making the international community a little bit fearful. Even though the ISIS is like almost dead right now, they're still alive. You can see that second of all, Kurdish legitimacy is really really low. You can see that United States uh, uh, like. Uh, decline their independent vote. That means other countries did not want to support them as a whole. That also they say that um, Tillerson also says that Kurdish refer uh, the referendum was illegitimate. So not only do they not have support from the international community, they don't have support from Turkey. But we are the internal link to solving to that. First of all, you can see in the links that the United States is going to be endorsing that this increases the negotiations to send military aid to wars defeating ISIS uh, once and for all. You can see that little aid they agreed to send to, uh, to uh, they agreed to send support when the Cur uh, wait sorry. the United States has agreed to send support when like the ISIS has been escalating. So you can see that uh, the United States will be. Uh, will be um, uh, uh, more likely to send all these uh, uh, military negotiations. But second of all, you said that there's going to be an autonomy that's going to be uh, key to directing military uh, military operations. There's something very, very uh, specific about these Kurds that they know the territorial uh, area of where ISIS is and how to attack them versus uh, in these mountainous regions of Turkey and across in places in Syria. Second, third, uh, yeah. Uh, this also increases U.S. legitimacy because we said we'd send support when ISIS escalates. Oh, yeah, this also it increases the United States legitimacy because we are following our word by saying we are going to be defeating ISIS and also going to be supporting the Kurds in doing so. So third of all, this is going to be spotlighting the issues, the spotlighting the issue of like ISIS itself, and we're going to be uh, putting in other key international players. Just cross by my uh, warrants about how like the UN, like every single time that we've interviewed, the UN has backed our promise. So that means that we have also like probably impacts with EU nations that want to get involved as well. Uh, and uh, so internal links, first of all, you can see that the Kurdish intelligence has actually localized the resistance and able it has a really uh, high success rate in the past but second of all you see legitimacy is key to international pivoting against the united against isis you can see that this is going to be decreasing putin russia away from supporting assad and the prospective russians uh, have like have like uh wait they have perspective economic ties to kurds oh they have like perspective economic uh, ties to the kurds which so means in terms of the, if, yeah which means uh, to the, from turning away from assad so in terms of impacts we're going to be solving after the terrorism that caused millions and millions of, of lives to be uh, depleted in the middle east every single year And then a new sheet down the bottom, I probably won't get to. <coughs> Any questions? Uh, yeah, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody. Actually, let me read this one first. Is anybody not ready? Time. Starts now. First is an Arab backlash disadvantage, first is the uniqueness, first the US intervention to change the state system growth poorly upon by Arab states, specifically looked to Iraq, where the US intervention was super unpopular. The key is that it's not like the intervention in ISIS, which is to preserve the current state system, is actually to change these universe. The existing state systems, you already have status quo powers that are invested in it. The next up point is the US is uh oh yeah, never mind. Um the, the next argument is that Iran has a large Kurdish minority in it, and any kind of support for the Kurds that would actually support them as a state system is seen as uniquely threatening to Iran. Also, because they're actually supporting Iraq as a state government, which also has a significant Kurdish minority. The B is the links. Uh, U.S. intervention triggers a massive backlash for a few reasons. First of all, there's, it's, it's seen as reframing current aid that is given to the, uh, the Kurds to actually support statehood. The U.S. wouldn't actually support statehood in the past because they hadn't actually endorsed Kurds previously. Um, also, this is a double wide because either there are at solves that you actually getting aid that would help the Kurds militarily and humanitarianly and you know, help them in humanitarian ways, or it doesn't solve them whereby you know, you're probably defaulting neg, right? Um next. Uh, yeah, question? Why does it not solve? Uh well because like if you actually if you're actually giving stuff to support the Kurds militarily, then you trigger the DA. If not, it doesn't solve. It's double wide. Um okay. Specifically, this triggers an Arab backlash. You're going to see a few results. First of all, Iran is actually going to support 
Iraq actively with oil wealth to actually backlash against the Kurds and actually causing military intervention. You're also going to see Arab militias, similar to what you saw in the Iraq intervention, to actually rise up against the uh, Kurdish state, specifically U.S. endorsement to change the state system is what's going to delegitimize the Kurdish state in and of itself because the U.S. has seen this imperialist power to try to overthrow the current status quo state that see themselves in and of themselves legitimate. This means you're going to see massive military mobilization by the Arab states, specifically look to Iraq and Iran, and probably Syria as well, are going to do backlash against the Kurds. And you're also going to see Arab militias, uh, specifically like Sunni Arab militias, that have worked as a super powerful military past look to 2008 in Iraq, which are actually integrated into the state army and are actively fighting ISIS right now. Um, two impacts. First is Iran nuclearization. Right now, the Iran deal is actually strong. Trump is actually threatened to pull out, but he's been threatening this for a while. It's really just a political ploy. He never actually gone through with the threat. Iran is actually uh, okay with the nuclear deal right now, but uh, this is actually seen. This is actually seen as a direct threat to Iranian statehood because the U.S. is actually supporting the Kurds, which Iran isn't okay with. This means they're actually going to pull out the nuclear deal and actually nuclearize. There's a few ways in which uh, nuclear war escalation is actually happening. The first is rogue generals, whereby you actually see decentralization within the Iranian military actually causing rogue generals to fire or escalate into vessels that would cause a, a nuclear a conventional war in which. Iran will launch a new second miscalculation whereby Iran perceives Saudi Arabia as making aggressive advances against them, which caused miscalculation to lead to a nuclear war, a conventional war. Not right now. Nuclear war leads to exchange specifically because of nuclear winter, whereby you see a whole bunch of dust uh, kicking out, which also you know clouds up the sky. Nuclear weapons also super bad and kill you know millions of people probably. The next impact is prolonged interstate war. Uh, the Kurds specifically have no advanced logistical systems. This is actually key to employing the tanks and aircraft systems they have. Looked specifically to uh, the Gulf War, where the U.S. actually uh, had a super high logistical advantage over the Iraqi army and stuff like tanks and advanced mortars, but they weren't able to use them effectively because the U.S. actually had logistical systems to be able to target uh, the Iraqi armies, and there was basically no friendly fire during the Gulf War. This basically means the Kurds can't actually employ aircraft mortars or any kind of long long range missile systems they actually have in order effectively against any other targets. However, However, uh, Arab states, with you, specifically states like Saudi Arabia, Iran actually have these through the Soviet Union. Mean they're always going to be winning the war. Also, the Kurds actually have a lower population compared and a lower military capacity compared to you know, like Iraq, who has 30 million people. This means the Kurds will always always lose the war. Specifically, uh, the Arab states are also actually mobilize more people because of the Arab militias that are actually going to be mobilized against this. It means the Kurds will actually never win the war. Turns case and cause a prolonged war specifically because any A that is actually given uh, prolongs the war means you have more deaths. Yes? Can you explain the story of this disaster? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, the Arab backlash leads to Iran nuclearizing and uh, militia and military backlash that stops the Kurdish state from getting independence at least for long war. Next disadvantage, Turkey backlash the first time the Union has stipulations that Turkey are good in the status quo. Trump and Aragon both share similarity of versus a fighting Islamic State. The U.S.'s diplomatic capital keep U.S. forces out of Syria. This is all from the Atlantic. However, the second point is that Turkey doesn't like the Kurds. According to time, Turkey sees Kurds as the biggest threat, as a bigger threat than ISIS. They see territorial gains as possibly leading to Tur Kurdish independence in Turkey, which is a significant minority. They also see Kurds as gaining seats in the, in the parliament right now, which threatens Turkish nationalism. You see a rise in Turkish nationalism right now with Erdogan gaining popularity. This is basically powered by the Kurds. The plan and the links. First, the, uh, Turkey actually sees the U.S. as siding with the Kurds as something it's not actually willing to uh, actually tolerate. The, the, they see the Kurds as uniquely bad and a threat to their security. This means that Turkey actually backlashes. Um, uh, yeah, it means they backlash and lead to more extremist policies that are pro-U.S. and it forces Turkey to the right. Um, no, I don't think. Yeah. If their plan solves and then the entire U.N. gets behind it, this then supercharges and like, because then Turkey then ends up crashing down harder on the Kurds. Uh, yeah, so if the plan actually works, you see the UN actually back, backing this, this, uh, this leads to an even stronger Turkey back, since they see the entire world community against their, uh, you know, advantages. The first impact is Turns case forces uh, political opponents to the right, which means you actually kill the Kurdish independence movement more aggressively within Turkey, and you lead to more backlash. This also leads to Turkey actually intervening militarily against the Kurds, which is another link to why this turns into why, you know, Kurdish independence never actually happens. You see more suffering. The second argument, um, I, yeah, it's just civil rights. Uh, cool. Go on to Gates. So, two overviews here. First of all, you're either triggering the backlash or you're not actually seeing any solvency. They're making these arguments of how aid is key to actually supporting ISIS. Or, like, they're making these arguments of how aid is actually key to supporting Kurdish military efforts. Either the Kurdish military efforts are actually strengthened you lead to the backlash arguments, or, you, uh, like, yeah, or it doesn't actually work. Um, Specifically, you see aid efforts in the past, like aid efforts to Rwanda that were actually hijacked, and aid efforts currently in North Korea were hijacked by military forces and were used for genocide and uh, large-scale uh, large military conflict. Aid is not a kind of neutral thing you would just, you know, rent out to actually stop military problems. Aid is necessarily military, not now I'm running out of time. Also, they make a lot of arguments about how, like, this is key to stopping ISIS. My argument is that ISIS is not a threat right now. There's, they read these specific inheritance points about how, you know, like, ISIS is making fake advances. But the thing is, ISIS just lost both of their capitals. They're going to revert to a insurgency movement. So there's not a lot of the Kurds can do about that. Um, 
Also, this is a super linear advantage. You already have a whole bunch of people actually fighting against ISIS and status quo, meaning you're not actually going to see a whole bunch of unique, um, you know, you're not actually going to see a whole bunch of unique benefits to actually fighting ISIS. Although they don't read any impact to ISIS are bad. Uh, also, on the aid impact, our argument is that the military hijacks aid, and aid never actually goes to the people. The military sees themselves as under an existential threat, therefore they're going to hijack aid. They're never actually going to let uh, the aid go to the people who need it. It's actually just going to increase the war effort and make it so the people um, and supercharge the dissad links. Um, uh, cross play all my analysis on ISIS. I just realized I read it on the wrong disadvantage, so I'm stupid. Um, also, um, this also uh, you know, supercharges the links, and uh, I'm done. Cool. Uh, cool, give me one second. <coughs> okay. So right off at the top, Casey, you can extend our solvency block about how the U.S. support is key to ending the Civil War a couple years ago, which means it's probably key to ending the, any sort of conflict that's happening right now. This is a precedent for the plan succeeding. On to the first advantage about lives. They uh, extend the entirety of the uniqueness, which when we talk about how Turkey and Iraq are using poisonous gas and killing hundreds and expelling hundreds from their homes, this is a huge impact about dehumanization and lives that they are completely conceding that's happening in the status quo. The status quo is not able to solve. They talk about how it, relations are stable between the Turkey and the Kurds. Like, sure, it's stable, but Kurds are dying right now. That means that even though it's politically stable, it doesn't matter because thousands of people are dying. You can also extend the fact that no, there are no resources and like people aren't able to get basic things like food and water because that Turkey and Iraq are blocking humanitarian aid from reaching the uh, from most of humanitarian aid from age, reaching Kurds in the first place. So you can extend all that. The only response they make is on the link how we talk about how aid is hijacked the first uh, my first uh, response is like they don't articulate who is going to hijack this and they don't articulate how this aid is going to be hijacked like if, they, if we send over food that like how, how does the military use the food to bomb other people like that doesn't work the next uh, the next argument here is that they don't have any analysis and they don't have any warrants to show that the Kurds have a precedent of actually taking this aid and using it for the military in the first place the next argument is going to be a no link the little aid that is able to go through the blockade right now that is able to like slip past the Iraqi blockade is actually going towards helping people who are literally dying in poverty people who have been expelled from the homes and don't have access to food, which means we already have a precedent for humanitarian aid succeeding. Uh, additionally, you can look towards, the, you can extend my partner's argument about how these Israeli investors currently actually helping people set up their own businesses and go to school and like get jobs and things like that, which means there's also a precedent of this type of economic aid not going towards the military and going towards people who need, who, uh, who need like, like, livelihoods, basically. You can also extend the rest of our links about how this enables uh, support from the UN and this, uh, this enables to solve for human rights issues. You extend all of our internal links about how this aid is key to defend, uh, defeating ISIS. Our argument is a radicalization that will lead to an increase of ISIS due to the fact that these people feel abandoned by the international sphere because they feel like they're they're left out and isolated, which leads them to turn to radicalization. When our argument is that we solve the root cause of terrorism by providing these people with humanitarian aid and, uh, and a reason to keep living uh, in the future. They, uh, you can also extend our arguments about like in attracting investors and how we're able to solve for the issues of poverty, extend that poverty is a systemic impact that's what's happening in the status quo right now. Extend yeah. the trade uh, trade relations are eighteen point seven billion dollars. Extend the trade re relations are eighteen point something trillion dollars. Billion dollars. Yeah, okay, so the second item about uh, legitimacy on the uniqueness level, you talk about how this is not a lie. You completely concede our second uniqueness argument that's, or the B part of our uniqueness yeah. argument that talks about how even though they lost a couple cities, they are making new advancements. Uh, uh, extend what my partner says about how they're reporting ISIS advantages as of September 13, which makes the international community fearful, which means that even though ISIS is going down, they're still, uh, in the last couple months, they've been going up, which is the reason why the plan is so, like, <laughs> and, and it's so necessary in terms of time frame. This is why the U.S. rejected the vote in the first place, because uh, ISIS is going down then, but now they're going back up, which means we the curse onto the link level when they talk about how there's no unique benefit you, you completely concede all of our argumentation that says the Kurds are literally there on the ground. We don't have this type of intelligence right now because Turkey is blocking us from accessing that intelligence in the first place. Our argument is that any marginal increase of intelligence is going to be a net benefit for the affirmation because that able, enables us to solve for issues like ISIS like more probably than we are able to do in the status quo. You can extend our impact, uh, our link about autonomy and uh, uh, how that enables the Kurds to actually direct their own military in a way that is more beneficial to fighting ISIS instead of having a, uh, a, a like Turkey direct them when, and when they don't actually know the land themselves. Additionally, extend how this uh, this turns like an international pivot towards uh, towards fighting ISIS. And so this means that since Russia has this perspective like oil pipeline drill uh, with uh, uh, with the Kurds, this means that they're going to shift from supporting Bashar al-Assad to fighting ISIS, which means there's another international actor that goes towards fighting ISIS. Even if ISIS is dying, we need them to die faster because on the impact we level, we talk about how terrorism kills people like literally every day. They uh, this also causes a lot of dehumanization impacts to the point where like people are forced to watch their family members die right in front of them. This is a massive impact. They, don't, they say we don't tell you why terrorism is bad. This is why terrorism is bad. You should be voting on this massive impact on the disadvantage. Uh, I didn't hear I get the title to the first day. Sorry about that. But on the uniqueness level, when they talk about how U.S. intervention is unpopular, our argument is that there's no link to here. We're not intervening. We're simply expressing support. This is completely.
completely different. Additionally, you can extend the fact that we uh, uh, we uh, put forth support in like when the Civil War happened. There was no backlash there because it was popular for the United States to live up to its word of saying that they would actually support the uh, support like and create peace in the Civil War. Additionally, when you talk about how Iran has a Kur uh, Kur uh, Kurdish minority. Uh, yeah, I'll answer that on the link level. Argument here is the only reason that Iran is opposing this type of referendum in the first place is because they're afraid of their Kurdish minority, but the Kurdish minority won't do anything because they specifically said that they want to stay a part of Iran. They just want their like neighbors in other countries to have uh, to have autonomy because they're the, their neighbors are the ones that are getting attacked by Turkey right now. On the link level, when you talk about Iran backlash, argument is that this is completely non-unique too because Iran literally already closed airspaces to Iraq and other regions of the area. I'll take it at the end of time, which means the entire disadvantage is non-unique. Additionally, argument is that Israel is going going to be able to check back, which prevents uh, which prevents Iran from getting unprecedented amounts of power in the uh, Middle East. Uh, the first word for this is that, uh, uh, oh, Israel has historical ties to the Kurdish people that last for decades. Additionally, they purchase Kurdish oil and they share concerns about militias in Iraq, which means they'll be able to cooperate, which means Iran has no, uh, there's no uh, interest or like no reason for Iran to backlash because uh, th they realize that they're going to be checked back by all the other power plays within the Middle East. Additionally, when you talk about how uh, militias rise up, argument that the root cause of militias are abandonment and or lack of humanitarian aid. Additionally, when you talk about how we delegitimize the Kurdish state because the U.S. is seen as imperialist argument is that the Kurdish people have literally asked for international legitimacy. We're not delegitimizing them. We're proving them more legitimate because responding to their calls, responding to their calls shows that we respect them as an international actor. If we ignore them, that just shows that we think there's this like silly little thing in the middle of the Middle East that doesn't matter. On the impacts, you talk about Iran nuclearization, like, site Trump ended U.S. involvement in the nuclear act, like, a while ago. This is completely non-unique addition to nuclear deals also with other countries. You have no analysis that shows that EU countries are going to pull out of the Iran deal, which means the Iran deal is still going to stay. Additionally, when you talk about road generals and, like, uh, nuclear war argument, is Matt is probably going to check back. Iran's not an irrational actor. And finally, you talk about miscalculation of Saudi Arabia. There's no analysis of Saudi Arabia in the level. Like, don't buy this impact. Finally, when you talk about prolonged war, argument is that we are able to stop war and send the civil war precedent uh, there. The second is the management about Turkey. On the, on the uniqueness level, when you talk about how relations are stable, sure, relations may be stable. That's because Erdogan has this control over the Kurds, and he's like systemically killing him anytime they oppose his undemocratic control, which means even though it's like stable, people are still dying, which is still a harm in the status quo that you are perpetuating that you don't respond to. Additionally, you talk about how Turkey doesn't like the Kurds. Like, sure, Turkey doesn't like the Kurds. That's why they're killing them. We're trying to stop them from killing them. Additionally, you talk, when you talk about how nationalism is empowered by Kurds, turn, we decrease nationalism because we make the Kurds their own separate nation, which means that the, the, the people in the Turkish government have no reason to securitize on the Kurds in order to campaign against them, which means that we're actually decreasing the amount of the reason for nationalism within the Kurdish, uh, Turkish government. On the link level, we talk about how Turkish backlash against the United States is a non-unique Turkey is already backlashing against the United States just because Trump likes Erdogan doesn't mean the rest of the United States Congress doesn't because they're also blocking our like bases and stuff because, uh, to reach ISIS in the first place, which is why, again, the Kurds are a unique benefit. Next, when you talk about how Turkey securitized against the UN, argument is that Tur uh, Turkey wants in with the UN. They want to join the UN, but, the fa but like, that means they won't like backlash against the UN because they don't have any reason to. Additionally, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to securitize further because if they see that the UN is against them, they're not stupid. They're going to actually just back down. They're not going to securitize further. Furthermore, there's no going to military, be military fighting between the Kurds and the Turkey because of the fact that there are economic ties because Kurd, uh, Kurd, like, they export a lot of wheat and cement and stuff that Turkey depends on. Followed by Arab backlash, uh, Arab backlash, okay. Turkey backlash. Yeah, that's okay. Thanks. Uh, advantage one, advantage two. So, top of case, yeah, off case, on case. Remember Leo's double bind that he reads at the top of case on the solvency level? He said that either you don't solve because the aid doesn't even get to the Kurds, in which case you have no solvency because all of your solvency comes through UN aid and UN support, or you make it the disadvantage because then this colors all of the historical aid that the United States has given to the Kurds through the lens of them having supported the Kurds. The United States has been military supporting the Kurdish people in a fight against ISIS for years now, and taking any action that then supports the Kurds and recolors this, which then makes them real, which then makes Turkey and any other nation feel really, really threatened. That, like, we got duped by you, United States, for tons and tons of years, which means that we're not going to want to side with you anymore, then that's the link into the advantage that was conceded in your speech. That is really problematic for them. Yeah, I get you right now. Uh, what do you mean by recolor the aid? Like so they've been, they've been they've uh, been giving aid to the Kurds for a really long time. That's been with like the like expressed purpose for fighting ISIS. But if you now switch and then say that like the United States is now going to uh, like, uh, like endorse uh, like international the like endorsement of the Kurds, that's like a huge pivot, which then recolors the way that Turkey has been seeing all the aid over the past years, which then makes them seem like they've been duped really hard by the United States. Go to air backlash. 
The first argument that they make is a no league at the top of case that is that, with the, like, that like you know people are expressing support for the United States. But even if even if like this is true, this is normally bad because then it causes the disadvantage to trigger. The second thing that we read is that Israelis so poor to super unpopular in the status quo, which is the warrant uh, that we read in, uh, that we read in this level. Of, uh, the, like the change in the state system is really bad, which is which they never respond to because status quo powers have invested uh, like invest have investment into the current system, which means that any support that is investment is extremely unpopular. You can also extend the second argument that they uh, read the second argument that we read that Iran is a Kurdish minority. Which means that the uh, you know that the powers that are in place or have invested minor have a vested interest in maintaining that minority just because like uh, you know like Turkey if uh, this yeah um, on the, on their backlash argument that they the thing that they say that the only reason that Iran opposes this is because um, that the only reason Iran opposes this is because Iran is. Uh, it, it's, it's because, it's because uh, the Kurdish minority, they, they say the Kurdish minority won't do anything. Oh yeah, they, they, the they drop my analysis about Iraq. Yeah. They say that the Kurdish minority is not going to do anything. First argument here is that like, if the Kurdish people are getting like killed in Iran as well, they probably want to do something as well. This is like a really dumb argument to be making. But secondly, you drop the Iraq analysis, which says that the, that the Kurds in Iraq right now also want, uh, which means that there's no reason that. And, and Iraq is a big ally of Iran. And, and Iraq is a big ally of Iran. This is the second argument that they, uh, this is the second internal link. This is the first internal link that we read uh, on this level, uh, where Iraq likes, uh, where Iraq likes Iran because of the oil wealth that they share. Additionally, you can extend. Our second internal link over here, which means that militias are riding it, rising up against a Kurdish state, but then turns case because then the United States is being seen as a super imperialist, which means that then any Kurdish state that's formed is seen as really problematic because it is probably unstable, because, just like the United States regime that came in Afghanistan with the Mujahideen and in Iraq with Saddam Hussein, which is really problematic um, because then there's no long-term stability in this region over here. Um, Additionally, you can accept the fact that these are Sunni militias, not Kur Kurdish people, which is really problematic when it comes to the fact that uh, when they make these arguments about terrorism, because there are no Kurdish terrorists, the, uh, like ISIS, which is the terrorist group they use, I select a Sunni on the internal link level. Uh, uh, the, 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 they say that US, like, U.S. endorsement is making them more legitimate. They, they missed that our argument is specifically about legitimacy with, among yeah. Arab states. So they, they say that like the, they say that like, U.S. Legitimacy is, legitimacy is good, but the argument here is specifically about the situations with Arab states. Uh, the situation with Arab states in like as like this one small area is going to be really bad, which is the area that we isolate as being problematic. On the uh, sorry, I don't have time for you. Um, on the Iran nuclearization uh, <laughs> level, they say that uh, we have a couple responses. The first argument is that they they say that Israel checks back. Israel is not going to check back because of Israel isn't going to check uh, they, back because they, 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 they concede all our warrants on why Matt doesn't check. They concede all of our warrants on why Matt doesn't check because rogue generals and miscalculation are not, you know, they're, they, they like circumvent Matt. Matt only works with rational actors and rogue generals by definition are not rational actors and also miscalculation. That doesn't interact with our uh, with our internal warrants over there. Additionally, in prolonged war, you say that, that this is not unique because like other countries go to war too. But the issue over here is that you create a prolonged war within uh, Turkey, uh, within the Turkish fight for uh, the search for freedom because uh, the Kurds then are not able to effectively deploy their defense systems. Right now, they have defense systems that they're effectively deploying, which is how they've been able to make gains and being able to like be able to have a, a referendum in the first place. But uh, the they say U.S. intervention in the past to stop the civil war. We say this is functionally different. Yeah, this is because of the U.S. actually endorsing independence. Yeah, this is functionally different because of the United States uh, endorsing independence, which means that all of the like technology that they have right now that they're using to fight the war then goes away because it's no longer effective because. Uh, Turkey is able. Turkey like wants to then quash them on Turkey backlash. You can extend both of the warrants that we read that says that that said that uh, Turkey stable and status quo. The first reason that Trump and Erdogan have similar fi have similar methods uh, fighting against ISIS. And the second argument is that um, it's really easy because uh, the United States has been using a lot of diplomatic capital to not intervene in Syria, which is something that Turkey is really important about. The only thing that they say is that Erdogan is in control right now, and that's like the only thing that's keeping them in power. But no, we are our argument here specifically about United States and Turkish uh, Turkish relations. This argument about Erdogan being controlled has nothing to do with this. Um, additionally, uh, on the link level, you say turn to Christian nationalism. This is the exact argument that we're making. That like any like fact, the fact that like these people are leaving is a thing that increases Turkish nationalism uh, in the first place. Because all sauce Lorraine in France. What? Look to Alsace Lorraine in France. Look to Alsace Lorraine in France. What happened there? Uh, specifically, France ceded the territory and caused national. Okay, yeah, yeah. Where France ended up ceding a ton of territory to like uh, to, to to Germany, which then caused a lot of nationalist backlash because people were like, "You can't just this is like our land. You can't take out this land." Which means that um, which means that like these people go over here probably with like that much, especially when you know the ethnic majority, the, the ethnic minority is then yeah, that's a problem. Then they read a turn. Then on their turn, gets to say non-unique because Congress doesn't like. Uh, Congress doesn't like Turkey because we don't let them use access to our bases, which is not true. Most of our bases that are fighting and uh, that are fighting against ISIS right now come out from Qatar, not from Turkey, which means that your argument over here does it's not have a relevance. Turkey's blocking 
Ar Turkey is blocking our access. Yeah, it doesn't happen anymore because it's much more comfortable guitar. Anyways, on the second argument, um, civil rights. They said that you United Nations with them, but this doesn't happen because this uh, this doesn't happen Turkey's because in the UN. Turkey's in the UN first and secondly because then Turkey is going to begin pressing down harder and suppressing more civil rights in order to get political popularity to uh, you know to have Erdogan maintain a power means that you're probably less civil rights on their advantages. <coughs> On the second link level on advantage one, they say that this is like that this is the main link that they end up going for and how this ends up being solved at the UN and solving the root cause of terror. First, you can cross apply Mount Atlas, which says that there's no cursed terror in the status quo that's only ISIS, and secondly, a UN collapse, um, or not a UN collapse, a uh, Turkish collapse, uh, which would co which would come about through uh, like the increased suppression is going to be less likely to support any, which means which is going to cause a less likelihood of supporting any future uh, legitimacy, legitimacy movements on the on this issue through uh, increased militias that are formed as a result of this, which probably undercuts all solvency. Additionally, they say that, uh, like, on our food turn, they, we said that the military is trying to use it as a suppression, uh, because, as, as suppression attacks because they're an existential threat. Overview. Oh, what are, what are one more time, <laughs> uh, Overview on top. Yeah. Arab backlash. Case in order. What do you okay. want? Okay. Uh, on the top. Okay. It, 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 it's, it's my story of the round set. Okay. <laughs> okay, any questions? Good. Anybody not ready? Mm -hmm. Time starts now. I think the story of this round is pretty simple. Every world is really fucking shitty. However, our world is a lot better. The thing is, they can see a lot of analysis on the dis that basically is turning the entirety of their case. We function as a reason why you're actually causing a civil war that would be a lot more destructive than anything that they're actually solving, and circumvents all their aid and the possibility of an actual independent Kurdish state. Go to the Arab backlash DA. The most damning thing is they concede a lot of the analysis of the specific empirics that we're talking about, about how, a, how US, any kind of U.S. endorsement is going to be uh, specifically unpopular. They can see the specific analysis that says the status quo states are endorsed in the system and any U.S. intervention or endorsement that would actually cause a shift in the status quo state <coughs> makes them perceive the U.S. as an imperialist. The U.S. historically has been imperialist. U.S. support for the change in the state system through Israel has been super unpopular, and the same thing happened in Iraq. They can see all of that analysis. That's just a specific warrant level on why this causes backlash and delegitimizes the Kurdish state. They also can see a lot of the analysis that I do in the near extends that basically says that you're actually going to cause Iranian backlash. They can see this specific warrant that says that Iran is going to backlash specifically because their client state, Iraq, has actually has a huge Kurdish uh, minority. It's they also can see all the analysis I read about how Arab, Arab militias, that's specifically been really effective, a, a really effective fighting force in the past, specifically in 2008, are actually going to rise up against the Kurdish states. They view them as illegitimate. That's all conceded analysis. The only argument they really have here is that we're actually making them more legitimate. That pretty much misunderstands our entire contention. As long as they haven't responded to the status quo power analysis, that basically means that this is functionally different, right? They misunderstand our contention, and they don't respond to it as such. So, the problem is, on the impact level, it's pretty big. It's pretty big, and they mishandle it pretty freaking. They, their only argument on Iran nuclearization is that, you know, mad checks. The thing is, I read mad indicts out of my speech, and Nerej extends them. The mad indicts are conceded. I also read extinction. That's going to be pretty problematic, right? Like, they... they they, they read on the link level to like Iran is already pulled, like Trump's already pulled out the Iran deal. It's just not true. You can fact check it. Um, however, this is a pretty clear warrant on why we're winning. Nuke war. See the impact. That's pretty nice. The other thing they mishandled is the prolonged war impact. I read a whole bunch of arguments why the Kurds are never actually going to win a war. I give you warrants on their technology, their population, and you know the kind of military capacity they have. That all goes conceded. That means as long as you have backlash and as long as you actually have a war, the Kurds are never going to win. This means the Kurds never get statehood. I also read you this causes a whole bunch more lives to be lost than's happening in the status quo because the Kurds aren't actually in a war with the status quo power state. They're not actually in a full state of war against someone who has advanced military technology like, you know, Iran, Iraq, or whatever. This basically circumvents all their aid efforts, means the Kurds will never actually get a legitimate state as long as you trigger this war, because they inevitably lose conceded warrants, and you cause widespread suffering, loss of life, through a war that's many times worse than, is going on, than what is going on right now. The Dissad has a lot of conceded analysis on it, and it very clearly turns case and outweighs them. Outweighs ISIS especially. Outweighs ISIS especially. Um, framing on the bottom of the Dissad, 
We say magnitude comes first specifically because magnitude is easier for the judge to evaluate. Like probability is super fluffy, and they're gonna say like, oh, there's a probability for probability for this, probability for that. But you, there's no actual way for you to weigh that. The easiest way for you to weigh the way is go through magnitude specifically because it's easy to compare a number of lives lost. Go into the dissents. The problem here is they concede a lot of the aid empirics to the near extents. Their argument is basically, okay, you know. We've never actually seen this aid hijacking happen in the past. I read the, the war, this is what happens when you see significant food aid to the North Korean military. This is what happened in Rwanda, specifically when the UN was actually giving food aid to the, Hutu, to the Hutus. You saw, militia, you saw militias and the military hijacking aid. We say aid is not non-political. This means you trigger the backlash to the creation of aid, and it's a takeout to the internal link of the actual dissent. This also is a turn, specifically because you're actually prolonging the war. This means as long as you're not actually responding to the analysis that I do on the aid, it's going to be pretty problematic for them. Um, also, on legitimacy, I make a ton of responses to ISIS about how, you know, like, ISIS isn't a threat. You know, there are other powers fighting ISIS, and it means they have pretty low solvency here. We're going to compare impacts real quick. First of all, we have a prolonged war that basically turns case. We also have nuke war. They have, you know, ISIS is going to hurt people. They never actually terminalize the impact on ISIS, nor do they ever say, you know, like, what aid is going to solve. You know, you have human rights abuses in Turkey, you have, on um, this side, you've got human rights abuses in Turkey, some decrease in poverty and maybe dysentery, and you also have, like, a slight decrease in ISIS. On our side, you have a pretty clear war that kills tons of people, actually re-entrenches all the issues that they talk about in their case, and that means they never actually solve for Kurdish legitimacy. Also, we have nuke war. Nuke war's pretty bad. You should probably be voting on nuke war. Let's go to... <clears throat> Add one, add two, DA one, DA two, and then uh, the double bind stuff on the uh, top of this. Actually, no, let's just take care of that first, because that's not that important. Okay. You're going to be voting out, because right now in the status quo, there is nothing to check back for all the lives that are dying in the status quo. That means there's over 100% probability that right now these people are dying. That's the reason you're going to be voting for the app. But first, on the top of case, we are not recoloring any past aid because our entire objective is to be fighting ISIS. That has been the number one goal for many, many years. This stays consistent. That means that there is no big pivot. There's no probability of that. They give you no warrants or analysis as to why. They just state this uh, double bind. There's absolutely no evidence to back this up. You're not going to be buying this whatsoever. But let's go on to the more important part. The first advantage about lives. You're going to be going towards probability over magnitude because for, uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, you can see that first of all, it, like what 1% versus 100%, you're always going to be going from 100%. Because if you go for big state impacts, like you, are, you can legitimize like little, uh, like very small reasons to be going to war that will end up killing more lives in the future. That probably means that in terms of magnitude, we'd probably be losing this debate too because you'd be killing more lives by just go, uh, by, uh, going with magnitude. But in terms of probability, if there is no risk of something happening, why would you do it? There's very, very small percent risk at the point of nuclear war is not going to happen. We tell you that Matt checks back because Iran is a rational actor and that Trump actually end the Iran deal. That means even if there are rogue generals, there's no probability of nuke war. That means that all their magnitude impacts don't don't make any single make any sense. Yeah. Extend the fact that the nuclear deal is also with other European nations. Yeah. They don't tell you why the other European nations. Oh yeah. The nuclear deal is also them. with other European nations. Which probably means that those nations would check back. They give you no analysis as to why this is not true. Probably means that you're going to be voting for us. But on to the specific ad about lives. Right now in the status quo, they say that oh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be hijacked by uh, problems and how like we have uh, but. Uh, they're going to be hijacked by problems, but first of all, they can see the warrants about right here about how there are uh, millions and uh, there are hundreds of people being uh, killed by Turkey's poisonous gas. I mean, and they read absolutely no squo solve arguments. That means that we are the only team that's uniquely key to checking back for these lives. They said that we're going to be prolonging the war. That is their linear diss ad. First of all, we already answered this in the thumper on the first uh, on the first from the very first speech that we say that civil war was solved with the United States enforcement, and there was absolutely no backlash, which probably is a precedent for how we can solve back for violence over here. But second of all, you. They can see the five reasons for why food is going to be uh, is, is going to is going to go through that sharing reason, and they like just extend oh military hijack aid. They give you no analysis, except the fact that invest uh, that there is no link. Even the very little aid is going to just helping people. There is actually a precedent, and food is not just going to bomb all these people. That means the military hijackers have absolutely no desire to be taking all of this aid away from these people, and also investors from Israel are not going to be militarizing They're anywhere. Already going uh, are, towards helping are already people. going towards helping these people, which probably means that we have precedent for sending for our solvency. That means. Worst case scenario, like even in the worst case scenario, there's a 100% risk of saving lives momentarily, even if there are backlash scenarios. But I'm going to prove to you why those backlash scenarios don't make any sense. But first on the advantage, but first on the uh, the first ad about Kurd legitimacy, um, like overview on this, we have the, the only warning.
report they have about uh, on here is ISIS about how there's they lost two capitals and they're almost dead. We have updated warrants, two warrants about uh, from October 17th, and also that they're uh, replicating fake news. These two warrants probably indicate that ISIS is not completely dead, and there is a risk for solving for them. But even if you don't buy that, you're going to be going for the fact that lives right now are 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 like being killed. That probably means that Squo does not solve. So try or die for the affirmative. On to the disadvantage about rap backlash. First of all. There is no risk of backlash for four reasons. First of all, there's no risk because there's a civil war in 2005 that no backlash was because there was uh, because the United States and UN aid were all together and there was no backlash from any of these countries. Second of all, there's economic ties within Turkey. Uh, there's economic ties within Turkey, which probably means that there's no uh, there's no uh, there's no back backlash from there. But also, third of all, Israel is already against Turkish uh, is already against Turkish violations on these human rights. It probably means Israel is going to be supporting the United States. But also, Israel checks back Iran. They they can see that warrants that there are historical ties in there. Also. Uh, in relationships with Kurdish oil. That means that there, uh, and also there's no airspaces that are going to be happening because it's not unique. Iran already closed its airspaces. That means that there is no risk of any military airstrikes that are going to be happening against Iraq, against, uh, against, Tur uh, against these Kurds. Also, that means there's no risk of nuclear war. There is absolutely no risk because, first of all, it's non unique, and second of all, there's very low probability. The cross application that the closing of airspaces means no chance of nuclear war is new. Sharon made the fifth argument, uh, sorry, the fourth argument here that Iran closed its airspaces. That means it's non unique that airspaces aren't just going to open up again because they're already closed. That was the fourth argument you should have flowed better. <laughs> anyway, you're not going to be voting for any risk of nuclear war. Send all the, uh, uh, cross apply all my analysis from earlier. Yeah. Respond to them saying that changing the state system is bad. Oh, yeah, they say that changing the state system is going to be really bad. Um, we already thumped this from the, we already thumped this because we say that investors already want to go into Turkey. For example, Israel already has uh, investors from four different sectors that want to go in. That means that changing the system is just going to appease them. It's not going to check back. It's not going to go for any uh, tensions whatsoever. But even if you don't buy that, and even if they drop their second disadvantage, we're still going to be winning this because there's no uniqueness. Because Turkey, like, wants in with the UN. That no, 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 extend that we decrease nationalism. Oh, also extend that we decrease nationalism because the Kurds are not going to be used as scapegoats by the Turkish, uh, by the Turkish which prevents the backlash from happening. So there is no risk of Turkish backlash. There's no risk of surrounding a Rob Spring dis uh, backlash. You're going to be voting for the app.